What's up, everybody? Today we are going to be talking about the Denver Broncos 2022 NFL season. So let's just get right out there and say it. They had the most disappointing season out of any team this year. Heck, I don't think it's crazy to say that most disappointing season of a team in the last, like, five years. I mean, think of the expectations for this team. Um, they acquire Russell Wilson early off in the offseason. And, you know, Broncos give up a king's ransom. They give him this guaranteed contract, so he's tied there for, like, I think seven years. And then they give up all these first-round picks. And they give up Noah Fan, who I think is a terrific underrated blocking tight end, a number one tight end in the league. Um, but, you know, they have Russ, and... They have this great defense. They have the young Jerry Dewey and Cortland Sutton and KJ Hamler and Tim Patrick and Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. And, you know, in my opinion, Russell Wilson's the most unique quarterback of all time. He really is. Just the way he, his footwork, his mechanics, his height, it's, it's shocking. That it all worked. Um, but yeah, so I noticed a couple things with the team that nobody was addressing. First off, I thought they were getting Aaron Rodgers. And apparently they thought that too. Um, because they ended up hiring the Packers offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett. And you know, everyone's like, oh, it could just be a coincidence, but there's actually reports out there that they thought they were getting Aaron Rodgers. And that's why they hired Nat, uh, Nathaniel Hackett. Um, so instead, after Rodgers, they went with the next best option, Russell Wilson. Problem is, Hackett's offense was designed around a pure pocket passer quarterback. A guy that's just going to stand back there in the pocket, drop back, Sling the ball downfield. Uh, it was this offense was not designed for a dual threat quarterback, a quarterback that can move the pocket, can escape the pocket, throw on the run, um, stuff like that. And so it resulted in Russell Wilson having the worst season of his career. I know a lot of people think he's washed, he just fell off a cliff. I don't because you know. James Harden, not to talk basketball, but a lot of you people know um, who James Harden is, even if you don't really follow basketball. James Harden was great, 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 fell off a cliff. But the reason he fell off a cliff was he didn't take care of his body in the off season. He just he just he came in out of shape one year, um, his last year in Houston, and never really been the same since then. Still productive. He's productive in Brooklyn. That short tenure, he's been productive, been productive in Philly, but he's never really gotten back to the Houston form of James Harden or the Oklahoma City version. So, with Russ, who's so committed to his body and his work ethic, I just I don't see how he could have fallen off a cliff with those weapons. A lot of it does point to Nathaniel Hackett. I mean, being a Bears fan. Nathaniel Hackett kind of reminds me of Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy being a, a coach like Hackett who had one offensive system and you either get a quarterback that works in that offensive system or you're going to fail. I mean, the greatest offensive coaches in this league, they can change their offense to fit their quarterback's needs. Um, you know, Shanahan's offense looked a little bit different um, those first game and a half with Trey Lance that I did with Jimmy Garoppolo and Brock Purdy. Um, you know, Cliff Kingsbury, we'll get to him in the next video. A lot of people don't like him, but he designed his offense around Kyler Murray and he completely changed him when Colt McCoy came in. 
Sean McVay. You've seen what he's done with guys like Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, Baker Mayfield. We'll get to them in the next later video. Um, but Matt Nagy, he had a dual threat quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky. And he tried to turn Trubisky into something he wasn't, a pocket passer. And that's part of the reason, not saying it's the whole reason, but part of the reason Trubisky failed. And then they get Justin Fields, who's another dual threat quarterback. Nagy can't get him to work either because, again, he's trying to use him as a pure pocket passer. Ultimately gets Matt Nagy fired. And uh, I guess Chicago, Chicago tends to be more patient. Um, their owners are much older. Some of the, I think they're like the oldest owners in the league, Virginia House, McCaskey. She's like, I think she just turned 100, actually. Um, and she's got like majority of the power, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but like they take forever to fire their coaches. That's why Matt Nagy lasted four years. The Broncos, they're under new ownership. These folks are young. They ain't waiting around. I mean, Nathaniel Hackett, I think he's only like the fifth guy ever not to finish out the year. It's the first time in NFL history we've had back to back seasons where a first year head coach didn't get the whole year. I mean, I've heard of one and done before, but not making it the whole year? Damn, it must be bad. A lot of things that were discussed throughout the locker room were he's a great guy, but he's in over his head, more of a coordinator than a head coach. Now, my concern is, this is, this is a little off topic, but he's with the Jets now. Well, the Jets don't have an offensive coach, so Hackett's going to be running this whole offense. Better hope you get a pure pocket passer. If you get a dual threat, you're... I don't think this is going to be that productive. Still shocked they hired Michael Fleur, or they fired Michael Fleur, but I digress. So, yeah, Hackett wasn't it. And then another concern for me with this team was their offensive line. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Um, offensive line isn't very good. I mean, I guess the reason I bought into Denver so much is because I said, Hackett, he may not be that good, but he'll be fine. He'll be capable. He'll be like a Mike McCarthy. Um, and I was like, well, Russ, he won with bad all lines in Seattle. Why can't he win with a bad all line in Denver? But ultimately, it was a complete failure. Um, that there is there is hope now because they were able to land Sean Payton, who we all know is a proven offensive guru, one of the best coaches in the league, especially on the offensive side of the football. He won a Super Bowl with the Saints. Um, going to be a lot harder to win a Super Bowl with the Broncos when you got Kansas City, the Chargers, and the new-look Raiders in your division. But I think he's, even if Russ is washed, which I don't think he is, he'll be able to clean up Sean Payton well, at least a little bit of it. So we, we're falling into the same trap, I feel, as we did this past season, but... I sort of like the direction Denver's headed. The new owners seem serious, legit. I love Sean Payton. I still really like Russell Wilson. Just fix up the offensive line a bit. I think you're good to go. You're going to get Javante Williams back. You're going to get Tim Patrick back. You're going to get some of your defensive guys that got hurt back. Hopefully you can re-sign Dalton Risner, their guard. But, um... Yeah, I have faith in Broncos country. Let's ride, as Russ would say. Uh, but anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, more content throughout the week. And yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. And see ya.